Greeting Man, a gift to Ecuador from Korean artist Yoo Young Ho, is one of several markers of the equator as it runs through the country. The humble bow suggests the importance of being open to possibility and difference in a first meeting. The figures stand on opposite sides of the equator, the two halves of the earth, greeting each other with warmth, compassion, and generosity. So I cross the equator, and from there it's a short ride to Quito, the second highest capital city in the world. The highest, by the way, is La Paz, Bolivia, and the third highest is Bogota, Colombia. Though Quito sits in a valley, the elevation of the valley is 2,850 meters, or 9,350 feet, which is just about the altitude of the very peak of California's Mount Shasta. This valley has been populated since 10,000 BC, although most of what we see now was built after the Spanish arrived in 1533. Even though I'm only a few miles south of the equator, technically I've passed from summer in the northern hemisphere to winter here in Quito. So technically, I maybe shouldn't be surprised that this sunny warm day could whip up a hailstorm. To leave Quito, you have to climb up the sides of the valley. Partway up, it started to dump rain. After another few hundred feet of elevation gain, the rain turned to pea-sized hail, pelting my helmet and visor, pinging off my gas tank. After a couple slips, I pulled over and for an hour or so, wait for it to stop. But I'm very eager to meet some people I feel I've known for 30 years, Alonso and Julia. They live in Sarasaka, an indigenous town east of Quito. ¿Tres, mil. Mil. Sí. <laughs> Demasiado grande. <laughs> Hermosísima. <laughs> But let me back up a little to my dear friend, Peter. Here's my recreation of our first meeting, freshman year roommates in college. That's me with the lacrosse stick. Despite this inauspicious greeting, Peter and I found that our shared love of Jimi Hendrix and roast beef sandwiches were a solid foundation on which to build a lifelong friendship. We went to Japan together after college and were lucky enough to find teaching jobs in the same school in Toyahashi where we shared a house. When we left Japan, our pockets overflowing with yen, we backpacked together through Southeast Asia. We've helped each other through heartbreak and guided each other along the winding path of love. We were each other's best man at our weddings. And then by some cosmic gift of good luck, 
We both ended up in Oregon, so we've been involved in the lives of each other's children. All of which is to say, we've been deeply connected to each other's formative life experiences, which is maybe essential for a friendship as profound as ours. So as I told Peter when I began planning this trip, I always had a gut feeling that someday I'd visit Salasaka, Ecuador, and meet Alonso and Julia. Ah, si, sí, funciona. Okay. Yeah. ¿Está listo? Listo. Okay, Imanaja, Pedrito, Imanaja, Imarurangi, Nyoka Kaibi, Awaguni, Mama Chumbida, Nya Kaibi, Nyoka Rikuchiguni, Nya Yoyari Gunchi, Nyokuchi Kausi, Nyokuchi Himalaya, Kajarishka, the Kai Punta, Pacha Venacho, Nya Kan, Kaibiti Kangi, Nyoka Kaibi, Peter is an anthropologist, and he lived with Alonso and Julia while he was doing his fieldwork, studying the indigenous culture in Salasaka. Alonso is a weaver, and as he sang here in Quichua, Peter would sit on this spot all day as Alonso worked, asking the right questions, patiently listening to Alonso's responses, taking notes. I'm not going to say a lot about indigenous culture here, because this is really a story about friendship. But I recommend Peter's first book if you want more. It was just getting dark when I pulled into Salasaka. Alonso greeted me in front of the hostel that he and Julia recently opened, Hostel Runa Huasi. They fed me as I sat by the fire. I felt an immediate connection to Alonso, which I guess didn't surprise me. But I also understood his Spanish almost perfectly. I've been struggling with the language on this trip, but with Alonso, I'm not translating words in my head. I'm just understanding him. It's Alonso's idea to have a switch roles and take a picture for Peter. I guess he looks like a motorcyclist. But as for me, instead of looking like a Salasakan, I think I look more like a 16th century Franciscan priest. When I tell this to the Salasakans gathered there, they laugh. One of them calls me a conquistador. I say conquistador or priest, and he says, same thing. I'm Peter's emissary in Salasaka the greeting man from the other side of the world. When Alonso takes me around to meet all the family, I think people sometimes forget that I'm not Peter. And maybe I forget too. Because this place, these people, have been so formative in Peter's life, I've absorbed some of that experience through the years. It's familiar. I understand Spanish and even Quichua. By coming here, I've closed the circle, connecting me to Alonso, Julia, Salasaka, Peter, and his wife Maria, who was here for a time too. I've taken them all more deeply into my heart. Okay, mi hermano nuevo, Alonso. Uh -huh. Salasaka. <laughs> Adios. Ciao, bye. <laughs>